All right, so what I now want to do is focus for a while on this, these two functions that we've just introduced, the rotation and the reflection. So this is the beginning of the lecture notes for lecture three. between them is distance preserving, well, if the distance between fx and fy is the same as the distance between x and y, for all pairs x, y. Well, maybe I should write x1, x2. Preserving function which is bijective. It's called an isometry. So by the exercise, a distance preserving function is a bijection if and only if. Surgery. All right, so that's an isometry, a distance preserving bijection between two matrix spaces. So when I say isometries of a metric space, I mean isometries from that metric space to itself. So as we just discussed, all the rotations and this T, which was a reflection in the x-axis, those are both isometries of S1 with this metric we've just constructed. Um, there were two prerequisites for this class. I'm curious which subset here has done which. So who's done the group theory in the mean algebra class? Okay, that's almost all. Right. Okay, so then you're familiar with uh, groups. So though if you haven't done that prerequisite, we're not going to use sort of uh, some of the more sophisticated parts of group theory, but you should be familiar with the definition, of course. So we are going to discuss group theory in this lecture and the next lecture. Right, so here's another exercise. A set of isometries of a metric space. group. Okay, so what's a group? A group's a set. I'm going to take all isometries of that metric space to itself. With an operation, the operation is composition of functions. The identity in the group is the identity function. It's clearly associative and inverses are there because the inverse function of an isometry is an isometry. Check this exercise, you should just look at the definition and check that the composite of two isometries is an isometry and that the inverse of an isometry is an isometry. And we're going 
going to denote this group by by song eight. Space. This is an old idea, so put forward in its clear form, bottom form by uh, Service Lee and uh, Klein. So this is the development program on the computer and the curious. Uh, so whenever I'm going to introduce a new sort of notion of space, the metric space, one of the first things I'm going to do is talk about the functions which preserve that structure. And then I'll talk about the symmetries which preserve that structure. And we'll play these two off against one another. It's a basic dynamic subject. Okay, but on a more down to earth level, what does it mean that the isometries form a group? Well, it means we can generate lots of new isometries from the ones we already know. So let's think about the circle. I know these two, well, this is a family of isometries indexed by theta. So I can generate new isometries by just multiplying them. Isometries of the circle are we'll succeed. So we'll classify all the isometries of the circle. Uh, there's a question called why, why do that? Well, the first question is I mean, you can't hand a mathematician any definition of that. The first immediately thinking, can I classify all of them? It's just a basic instinct. But okay. Putting aside that basic instinct, um, just because you can write down a metric space, say the circle, I mean, we wrote down a metric, it doesn't mean we understand a damn thing, we just know the distance. If you want to sort of understand the structure of a space, looking at its group of structure preserving automorphisms, which is just a word for bijection, uh, that's the first step. Right? If you don't have a handle on the symmetries which preserve the structure, then you don't really understand anything. Okay, so that's why this is the first thing. So let's look at an example of an isometry we can write now, so generic. So what can we do? Well, we can take r thetas, various thetas, and we can multiply them. And we can fit in some t's. Right. So that's a sort of generic looking thing. And that will be an isometry for any four angles, theta 1. Through theta 4. There's nothing special about this particular combination. You can just imagine any word that has that kind of shape. Sequences of things that are either half layers or t's and finite length. Right, so the first question is well, is that really a new isometry or is that just one of the things in our list already? Is, is it new? I, is it just half theta or t or some theta? For instance, if I didn't have any of that stuff, it was just r theta 1, r theta 2. Well, that's a product of two rotations. That's just another rotation. Right? So that's not anything new. Okay. So there's certainly expressions like this which just collapse down to the ones that I started with. Uh, for instance, what's t squared? Okay. Reflect twice, it's the identity. Okay. So t squared is also. I don't put the identity function on my list because that's always the right? so. Okay, so uh, what are the, do we get anything really new out of these products? And the second question is, does this equal such products exhaust all the isomers? 
say this more precisely later, uh, you've seen group theory, so let me just state it in the formal language, which is, is the group of isometries generated by that set, namely T together with the R thetas from all theta? Which is this question, can every element be written as a finite product? Okay, so those are the two basic questions, right? We looked at the space, we wrote down the two most obvious symmetries, and then we get this class, is that it? So, we're going to answer this question. And we're going to do it by first understanding what are the relations between these operations. So, the first obvious operation, relation rather, is R1, which says that R theta, R theta 2, is R theta 1. R theta t, there's a way of rewriting that. Uh, and possibly you guys have seen this proof before. Uh, I don't know the relation. What happens if I reflect and then rotate anti clockwise by the thing? Is there a different way of writing that as a combination of reflections and rotations? Well, first of all, is it a rotation? No. Okay, so, well, it's certainly not just a reflection, but maybe I can get it as a combination of reflections and rotations in a different way. Someone see it in here? Let's just check that. Okay. Okay, so what's the check? I just, just write it okay. The pictures. Uh, <coughs> okay, the picture first. Oh, okay, let's do the calculation. So if I feed in a point on the circle, first I have to multiply B by negative 1. Okay, so acting by T is the same as multiplying by a particular matrix. Which is 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Okay, so R theta of T of this is this matrix times this matrix times this matrix. So I might as well just multiply these two matrices. Cosine theta. On the other hand, T R minus theta will be zero zero. Theta. This. Okay, so that matrix is therefore cosine theta, cosine theta, minus sine theta, and positive sine theta. This just takes the first row, so that's cosine theta, sine theta. It's minus the bottom row, which was minus sine theta. Check their equality by multiplying 
two matrices which give rise to the functions. So the relation between these functions is just the relation between the matrices. And finally, there's another relation which we've already observed, which is that reflection squares to the identity. Okay, so those are three relations we just checked directly on these uh, isometries. And, uh, to the picture. There's a picture in the notes which explains geometrically why this relation is true. I mentioned it. So let's move the, th and we can either identify these or we can move the theta through twice. Still leaves the question of how do we actually tell if two such things are equal? So maybe it's true that r psi t to the n is equal to r theta t to the m for different, a different pair, theta comma n. Uh, and how do we know that all the isometries of the circle 